Hello friends, this video on tissues part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. This will end our discussion on connective tissue and I, I hope that the video helped you in understanding the different types of connective tissue and their structure. So now we will go ahead with muscular tissue. So what is muscular tissue? So connective tissue connected the different parts of the body. Epithelial tissue act as a covering of everything present inside the body. And what is muscular tissue? It is responsible for movements in the body. So the tissue which is responsible for movements in the body is muscular tissue. As the name suggests, muscular is derived from the word muscles. So that means muscles are something which actually helps us in moving, right? So here we are going to talk about muscular tissue. So you would have seen this for an example. When we breathe, what happens? The chest muscles move there is some movement which keeps happening in our chest if you want you can try it yourself breathe in and breathe out and just keep your hand over your chest and you can feel that there is some kind of movement as it is as shown on in this picture there is similar kind of movement happening in your body and that movement happens because of the muscles which is present around the chest so that it is because of the, uh, the expansion and contraction of the chest muscles so not only the breathing process whatever we do for example while cooking what are we doing we are moving our hands right so how are we able to move our hands it is because of the muscles which are present in our hands that we are able to move it similarly when playing or when we are running our heart beats so all these movements are because of some muscles associated with them for example the movement of the heart is also because of the heart muscles the muscles which are present on the walls of the heart so because of the contraction and expansion of those muscles the movement happens so may any kind of movement which you can think of whether we move our hands or uh, the heart beats or the breathing process so everything in which involves movement also involves muscular tissue so here we will see how muscular tissue helps us in. now let us see how actually the muscular tissues cause movement now this muscular tissues contain muscle fibers so as we all know one of the constituent of all tissues is fibers so even inside this muscular tissue we have muscle fibers and these muscle fibers contain a special kind of proteins known as contractile proteins now these contractile proteins enables contraction and relaxation so do you understand by what do i mean by contraction and relaxation for example if you have a spring when you stretch the spring it can get stretched like this when you compress it it can get compressed like this right so that means when it expands we say it is expanding or it is relaxing so this situation is known as relaxation and this situation is known as contraction right so these muscle fibers have a special type of protein which are known as contractile proteins the name of the protein itself is derived from this property of contraction of these proteins so due to the presence of these proteins the muscle fibers can also contract and relax they can also expand and contract and this contraction and relaxation of the muscle fibers actually cause movement because when, when, when we studied about connective tissue even the connective tissues were made up of different type of fibers like the collagen fibers which provided strength the elastin fibers which provided elasticity the reticular fibers which again provided a support to the connective tissue but there were none of the, and they were all made up of uh, either proteins or uh, sugars or something like that but in case of this muscle fibers they are made up of this special kind of protein contractile protein because of which they can contract and relax and this contraction and relaxation of the muscle fibers causes the movement causes the movement of the muscles right so whatever muscles we have if we feel like raising our hand we are able to raise our hand because the muscle fibers which are present inside our body they are actually contracting and expanding and because of that movement we are able to move our hand so this is the basic property i mean this is the basic cause the contractile protein behind the movements in our body
So now let us look at the different types of muscular tissues. Now there are basically three types of muscular tissues, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. So we will talk about each of these muscles one by one now that what are skeletal muscles, what are smooth muscles and what are cardiac muscles. So let us talk about the skeletal muscle tissue. So this is the most abundant tissue in vertebrates. So most commonly found is the skeletal muscle tissue. As the name suggests, skeletal, that means this muscle tissue has something to do with the skeleton. So let us see what it is. It causes movement of bones of skeletal system. So that is why it is known as skeletal muscle tissue because it causes the movement of bones. In connective tissue, that means it... The connective tissues connect the body and forms the skeletal system and the muscle tissue helps to move the bones of the skeleton. So these are also known as voluntary muscles. Why are they called voluntary muscles? Because these kind of muscles, these kind of movements which we are talking about that happens as per our will. If we want to move our hand, we move our hand. If we want to stop the movement, we can stop it. So that means the movement happens as per our will. And that is why these kind of muscles are known as voluntary muscles. Now, for example, you can consider the movement of your hands. You can consider uh, the example when you are jogging. If you feel like jogging, you will jog, right? So that means you will make the movement only when you want and you will stop making the movements when you don't want so that is why they are called voluntary muscles they are also termed as striated muscles why are they called striated muscles that's because when these muscles these muscle tissue were observed under microscope alternate dark and bright bands were seen that means some bands like this were seen one dark one light one dark one light so these kind of bands were seen when this tissue was observed under microscope so because of the presence of this stripes or these striations these muscles are known as striated muscles and this alternate dark and light bands are called striations so that is why they are striated muscles so a skeletal muscle tissue can be called as a voluntary muscle tissue or a striated muscle tissue so when you think of your skeletal uh, muscle tissue, you can think of these examples when you play because it happens as per your will or when you jog, right? Now let us look at the structure of a skeletal muscle tissue. How does it look like? Now in the skeletal muscle tissue also contains muscle fibers and the muscle fibers in this case are generally long and cylindrical. These are multinucleated cells. That means each cell has multiple nucleus. They are called multinucleated. Multi means many, nucleated means nucleus. So a cell with multiple nucleus is called multinucleated. So muscle fibers, I mean the cells making up the skeletal muscle tissue, they have many nucleus. They are generally long and cylindrical. Multiple mitochondria to meet the energy needs. It also has many mitochondria. Now why do you think that you have multiple mitochondria in skeletal muscle tissue? Because skeletal muscle tissue is something which actually helps in the movement of our skeleton. Now, in order to make movements, we need a need lot of energy. And where does this energy come from? It comes from the cell. And who prepares and or who generates energy inside a cell? Who is the powerhouse of a cell? Mitochondria, right? So when you have more mitochondria, you can generate more energy. So you can use that energy in for different types of movements. For example, you would have seen that if you are doing uh, some exercise or if you are dancing or if you are jogging, you need more energy to do these things because it, it involves continuous movements, right? And for these movements, you want your muscle tissues to show relaxation and contraction. So for that, again, energy is needed. So that energy comes from the mitochondria. So that is why the skeletal muscle tissue cells have multiple nucleus and they also have mitochondria to meet energy needs. Now, when you look at them, the structure looks somewhat like this. So you can see the striations, right? One light band, one dark band, one light band, one dark band. That is why they are known as striated muscles. So these are the striations, one dark, one light. Here you can see the multiple nucleus which are present. Now, this is just one muscle fiber. So one muscle fiber is long and cylindrical. As you can see, it, it has multinucleated cells. It has so many nuclei in one cell. Right? So this is how a skeletal muscle tissue will look like. 
Now, in biology, there is another important thing is that you should always have the picture of everything in your mind. For example, whenever you think of skeletal muscle tissue, you should have this picture in your mind because many times we are asked to draw diagrams of different parts of our body. Now, what is the function of the skeletal muscle tissue? It helps in the coordinated movement of limbs, jaws, eyeballs, etc. So, all kinds of movements. It is also involved in the breathing process because while breathing also you would have seen that the things are in your control. Let us suppose I want to breathe and I want to take a long breath now. So I can take a long breath. So it, it is as per my will. So it has some role to play even in the in, uh, breathing process because that happens voluntarily. Right. So with this we will start with the next type of muscle tissue that is the smooth muscle tissue. It controls the involuntary movements of the body system. So in skeletal muscle tissue, we, we included all the voluntary movements. That means all movements that happen as per our will. So in smooth muscle tissue, we'll talk about movements that happen involuntarily. Whether we want it or we don't want it, the movements keep taking place. So that is why these muscles are called involuntary muscles. They are also known as unstriated muscles because when these type of muscle tissue are observed under a microscope, the alternate dark and bright bands or the striations were not at all seen. So they are, they are known as unstriated muscles. So some of the examples of a um, smooth muscle tissue can be like for example our digestive system. So the food which we take in, the movement of the food takes place through the alimentary canal and it reaches the digestive system. So there it passes through the intestines, the stomach and all. So nobody, we don't want it to, even if I say that, okay, I don't, today I don't want the food to reach the digestive system. So do, do you think that the food will not reach? It will still reach. So that means the movement will still happen and those movements happen because of these smooth muscle tissues which are present somewhere around the digestive tract. So these kind of movements which are not under our control are known as involuntary movements. So let us look at the structure of a smooth muscle tissue. How does it differ from a skeletal muscle tissue? So here the cells are spindle shaped. What a spindle shaped? Spindle means it will be elongated but both the ends will be thin and pointed. So it will look somewhat like this. So here you can see a spindle shaped cell. So this is a cell which is in the shape of a spindle. That means it is long, it is thin, it is elongated but the ends are pointed. So they are known as spindle shaped cells. They are uninucleated because you see each cell has one nucleus. See, this is one cell, so this has one nucleus, right? So these are two important points of difference between the structure of a skeletal muscle tissue and smooth muscle tissue. In skeletal muscle tissue, you have multiple nuclei per cell. Here you have one nuclei per cell. In uh, skeletal muscle tissue, the cells are elongated and cylindrical in shape and here they are thin elongated with pointed ends, that is spindle shaped. Now let us look at the function of smooth muscle tissue. It helps in the movement of food along the digestive tract, say alimentary canal, stomach and intestine. It also helps in the contraction and relaxation of the blood vessels. So the blood vessels, I mean when, when the heart pumps blood, so the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood keeps moving throughout our body with the help of the blood vessels. So this movement also happens because of the contraction and relaxation of the blood vessels. So this movement is also involuntary. We cannot stop the movement of blood throughout the body, right? So these are some of the examples of smooth muscle tissue that is involuntary muscles. So with this, we will start with the cardiac muscles. Cardiac, the, what is the term cardiac? Cardiac is something related to heart. So you would have always heard of the cardiology department in hospitals. That means the department which deals with the diseases related to heart. Similarly, you would have heard of a cardiologist. That means a doctor who is a heart specialist. So the cardiac muscles are the heart muscles. So this, our heart keeps beating, right, all the time. So as long as we are alive, heart will keep beating. So this beating of the heart is also involuntary. But these muscles have little different characteristics than the 
uh, smooth muscles and that is why they have been classified separately as cardiac muscles because you might think that the beating of the heart is also involuntary so we could have put this heart muscles also along with the uh, involuntary muscles or with the smooth muscles but since there are certain differences or there are certain different properties which these muscles show, show that is why they have been classified as a separate group. So these are unique muscles found only in the walls of the heart. So these kind of muscles are found only in the walls of heart and that is why they are known as cardiac muscles. They are responsible for rhythmic contraction and relaxation of heart throughout life. So the heart keeps beating throughout life. So the contraction, why, why does the heart move? It is because of the relaxation and contraction of the heart muscles. And these keeps happening at periodic intervals of time throughout life. So let us look at the structure of the cardiac muscles. Then we will come to know why are these muscles unique? Why they don't fall under the category of striated or unstriated muscles? Now, these muscles have few similarities with skeletal muscles, whereas few other similarities with smooth muscles. And that is why we cannot group them under any of these. So, these were the only muscles other than the heart muscles, the muscles which other all the muscles which are present inside our body, they have similarities either with skeletal muscle or smooth muscle. So, they have been grouped under each category. But heart muscles were the only unique ones which had some properties of skeletal muscles and some properties of smooth muscles. So, that is why we have made them as a separate group called cardiac muscles. It has striations, however, not so prominent. So, this is the similarity with skeletal muscles. The skeletal muscles have striations, that is alternate dark and light bands, right? So here you can see the alternate dark and light bands, which are termed as striations. So they have striations, but the striations are not as prominent as the skeletal muscles. But at the same time, it is uninucleate. Now, striated muscles are multinucleate, right? So it is uninucleate. So this is a similarity with smooth muscles. Again, these are involuntary muscles. So this is again a similarity with smooth muscles. So that means the cardiac muscles have characteristics which are a combination of the characteristics of skeletal muscles and smooth muscles. So here you can see it is uninucleate. So for every cell, you have one nucleus. Now let us have a quick comparison between the three types of muscles which we have discussed just now. Skeletal versus smooth versus cardiac muscles. Now the skeletal muscles are striated, smooth muscles are non-striated, cardiac muscles are striated but not so prominent. Skeletal muscles are voluntary, cardiac smooth muscles are involuntary, cardiac muscles are also involuntary. Skeletal muscles, when I talk about the structure of the cell, they have long cylindrical cells, the smooth muscles have spindle-shaped cells and the cardiac muscles have cylindrical branched cells. So you can see here they have got cylindrical cells but they are branched. See, from one cell is connected to another cell, with, I mean, it is like a branching pattern. Skeletal muscles are multinucleate, you have multiple nucleus, nuclei on one cell. Smooth muscles are uninucleate, that is one nucleus per cell. And cardiac muscles are also uninucleate. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.